Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Outside the Booth, what's that, what's where we that, talk to that? DJs about DJ's life and experiences. I go by the name of DJ Kamish. Hey, now. My uh, lovely co-host, BX, is here. What's up, y'all? My uh, co-host, Mr. 212, what, DJ what, what, Knuckles, what? is here. What's up, boy? And uh, we have a special guest all yes. the way up yes. from Miami. I don't know if you did MIA or FLL to get here. But you're here, right? <laughs> yeah, my yeah, homie, yeah, yeah, my yeah. homie Fly Guy is here. Yeah. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Um, Fly Guy. And Fly Guy, let me let me let me let me just start by asking, how did you get your name? Because it's not Fly Guy, it's a Fly Guy. Right. Only for only, only for search engine optimization. So <laughs> but short story, before I was DJing back when blogs was a thing, mm -hmm. me and my crew out of New York we used to go down to DC and throw parties. And the parties were called fashion monster parties because we were so fresh and scary. <laughs> so everybody in the crew had a nickname except for me. So one day we get to the party, I'm wearing we all wore half tuxedos on the top, jeans on the bottom, mm -hmm. fitteds. So our door girl looked at me when we walked in and she was like, Yo, you're a really fly guy. And then from there, I was like, yo, I need a name for my blog. And it stuck. Then a year later, I started nice. DJing. And I'm like, well, my real name is Rassan. I'm like, I'm not going to be DJ Rassan. So I just use Fly Guy. See, that, that's why we do this. That, I like stories <laughs> like that. <laughs> that, that. Nobody would ever know that. You could DJ 100 years, nobody would have knew that. Right. That is yeah. crazy. I, I, I know this guy. We go back at least, I don't know, 10. <laughs> about 10. About, about a good 10. 10 years, yeah. And I never knew that. I yeah. never heard that. And I put the A in front of it so that when you Google it or you search it, it will pop up first. Right, right, right. You know what right. I mean? Gotcha. So that, gotcha. So. He's a telemagic. Well, that's some marketing, though. That's 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 that's, that's yeah. some marketing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's how you get dope. it done. Because you know, it's like who doesn't love a fly guy? Like, that is a fact. You know, so when you say it like that, all in terms of fly. branding, marketing, promotion, that was the whole like science behind using A. Dope. Yeah. Dope. I'm a freak for the real story behind stuff. I'm a freak for that beat. That was dope. Thank you. That's dope. Where's she at? You you still know? No, nah, we haven't seen. I mean, this is you know, you're going back to 2007. She might so. call you for a check, B. You she might. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's dope. That's dope. Um, so when did you start DJing? 2008. That's 2008. kind of a long time. 2008, six, so this is year number 16. That's good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was always like my first maybe two or three years, I was horrible. Right back, I got banned from a couple uh spots in South Beach. <laughs> Get out of here, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I later, years later, went back and DJed in, and they didn't know it was me that they banned like five years before. That's funny. You know, Wait what I mean? mean, you got banned how? Like just because of the bad. music was bad. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, did you have, were bad, did you have the DJ it? name when you did it? The, when you was bad, yeah. the first you changed it or you no. kept saying it? No, same. They just oh, forgot. They just forgot. You know, That's like funny. time heals all wounds, I guess. But you know, I guess I gotten so much better that they didn't remember. The reference and stuff, you know what I mean? So, but um, but yeah, that's when I started. I can't wow. picture you being bad. Yeah, it was awful. Like wow, um, you remember? So you remember I did the TV show Master of the Mix? Mm -hmm. Yes, right? yes, and I remember Peter that. Pree was one of the judges. Yes, sir. You did that show too. I did season three, yeah, the last season. The oh, big, okay, the big season. No disrespect to BET, but yeah, right. Because season one and two were thirty minute episodes on BET. Right. Yes. The other ones was an season hour. Three was an hour. Yep. On VH1. I remember mm -hmm. that. So it made it more prime time. But right. the episode, you know, out of ten episodes, I went home on episode seven. And the episode that I lost on, I was supposed to lose because of who I was going up against. Okay. Shout out to JCO, uh, Chris Collins, uh, DJ Incredible Boy, Lil Kim's DJ. Mm -hmm. But even in that in that instance, this is 2013. Right. Mm -hmm. Like my chat, like when they what it was was every episode they would issue the challenge for the day in the morning. So okay, mm -hmm. here's today's challenge: go to the practice room and practice. Mm -hmm. So that morning when they were like, okay, the challenge is speak with your hands. I knew I was going home. Because that episode was the turntablist episode. Mm -hmm. And gotcha. I know that, you know, every DJ has their strengths and weaknesses. That's my weakness. Oh, so I, okay. I was like, okay. To the point where I told the producers, I said, I don't even want to do the challenge today. Really? So then they, you know, they don't be a quitter. And I'm like, all right. right, right Can right. I curse? Can I curse no. on here? No, we don't. Okay. Like, but <laughs> so I was like, all right, I, I won't be a quitter. Went and did the challenge. And it was so bad. And mind you, we filmed it in Miami. So I was like the hometown hero. Yeah. Right. Everybody in the yeah. crowd that came to the tapings cheering for me. Mm -hmm. It was so bad. Girls in the crowd started crying. That's how bad. The That's how bad. Get out of here. Really? How long was the set? Two minutes. That felt like two hours. Did it take yeah. toll on your business once you finished the show? And I, it elevated my business. 
even though just because you was on the show, just because you're on the show, okay. you know, like mm. you couldn't pay for that. Kind. I was in the newspaper, the Miami Herald, and you know, Pub Sisters, Sister to Sister magazine. And okay, so from a publicity standpoint, they that had done great. so much marketing in the months leading up to the premiere that it was already good. But I definitely caught some hate too, like DJ Cry Guy, because I ended up crying on the show. They called you crying because after guy. every episode, you would have to go and do like your post challenge interview. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was like, the people, internet people could was like, be so you, cruel. You going home and that was yeah. the beginning. The, that's yeah, not that's just the internet. That's just people. That's, like, Yo, <laughs> yeah. that's just so cruel. DJ cried. Yeah, cry cry guy. Yeah, on Twitter that's they, they cool. let me. We got remember too. Some people don't really see the in depthness of this DJ thing. They really right. don't. They they some see it as oh, it's just a hobby. This turns right. into from a hobby to a job to a career, and that's yeah. all passion. Like they don't yeah. you don't understand if you're really passionate about something and you don't you don't execute it well. Yeah. Yeah. That's how connected to the to this craft that I am. So is this your primary? This is your career. This is all, all you this do. This is all I've done this for the past 16 years. This, this is how awesome. my family. Yeah, this, That's this, nice. is, this is not a hobby. So right. it got yeah, it became a business very fast, you know. It like from year number two. So what was the first tour that you went on? Because we're gonna to touch into what you've been doing the last couple of months, but what was your first big tour after doing well, the show? The first big one was the RB money tour that I just did. That I, was it? Yeah. Okay. That's what Tank was like. Uh, he's like, look, you start now, hot out the gate. Look, this is your first tour, <laughs> nice yeah. little bus. And, yeah. You know, I was like, you know, but um, but I'd gone on the road with Uncle Luke before. Okay. Uh, going on the road with T.J. Mm -hmm. Moses, Raheem Devon, but this was like the first like Big multi city, twenty five cities. And oh, nice. Let me, bus let me ask you. You know, uh, you know, you, me, and Kamish, we know all tons of DJs, and if we was to sit and just do a DJ conversation, we sit and eat, we would sit there and categorize DJs. Mm -hmm. Even though we don't like to be that because we feel we're flexible and all that. But when you said you do the tours, do you feel like, okay, this didn't work for me, but this tour thing is, do you feel like you're just a tour DJ or you could still do the eight to eight parties like we used to do? I can do anything. Okay. I'm a party, party you're DJ. Party. You're you know? party. And it's taken, if you actually take the party approach and apply that to an arena or to like a concert hall. Mm. You you know you create the same energy. Right. People come into the building early. They get in their seats. They're not mm. maybe they're not drunk yet. They're not there yet. They okay. I'm here now. Here for the show. But right. how do you engage them to pay attention to you? Correct for an hour before the artist comes out. Right. I was right. just about to ask you that because I'm that's one thing I've never done. Like you've been on tour. Yeah. And you just finished a tour. Two um, tours. Well, he's still on tour. Well, the Chris Brown tour is different. So shout out to my garden and my headliner family. Like so, what we do is the after parties. For the Chris Brown tour, so, so gotcha. Chris has his DJ. Shout to DJ Fresh, the world famous DJ Fresh. Uh, that's the tour DJ, mm -hmm. and then we do the after parties for. Gotcha. Chris so you're gotcha. doing the parties. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, because I was asking because I know the tours. Uh, Ninety percent of the time, depending on the artist you wear, this is a, what a 15, 20 minute opening. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're the actual show DJ, you're doing the intermission mm -hmm. with him or without him, because some artists, you know, they stay on stage or they go back and dress, and then you. Ah, nah, nah. You know, you got people that just do that, mm -hmm. and then you put them in the club, and you be like, <laughs> 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 "We was just at the arena with him. What right. are you doing now?" Right. You know what I mean? Right. But you know, it's always a great question because, like I said, we got great listeners, and we can inspire people or get the questions answered that they don't know. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you know, Kid Capri, one of the greatest, mm -hmm. and uh, I watched him do eight in the morning i mean 8 p.m to eight in the morning like mm -hmm. those That's parties crazy. and then all of a sudden became this tour guy and then you don't see him do full parties no more so i don't know if it's because of his celebrity status mm -hmm. or there's just that kind of thing you grow and grow and you get into a category to where you are a celebrity dj mm -hmm. and you don't have to play as much mm -hmm. you dare not come from because yeah. some of them don't come back to the party scene once they get to a certain level so right you know, I just love DJs personally that are flexible. That's why, you know, I ask you. I know yeah. you got love for I it. I think it also becomes like the kind of gratification you want out of mm -hmm. your craft and your career at one point. Because, like, the party energy we know is different than, you know, a concert energy. Right. Right? But if you, you know, if you want both, then hopefully you'll be blessed enough to do both. Me, I love both. Yeah. For how for how, how different they are, mm -hmm. but then how similar they are, too. You yeah. know, but, like, the R&B Money Tour was, was so incredible because I had an hour I start to show up with an hour set Ooh, and then nice. Carl Thomas comes out. Nice. And then right after Carl, D shout to DJ Mars. He's Usher's DJ, Kerry Hilson's DJ. That's ATL. Yeah. Baby. yeah. <laughs> Mars will come out and get the crowd ready for Kerry. Mm -hmm. And then he'll DJ with Kerry's set. And then after that, then I'll come back out for another 15 minutes before Tank comes out. Mm -hmm. So I got to do it like twice. Gotcha. And really like showcase who I am and right. give them 
different kinds of energy like within the first hour mm -hmm. and in that little 15 minutes that felt like an hour right and then take that because when tank comes out it's like now everybody now the place is full everybody's yeah. ready right. Right. Yeah. they're like let's so it was interesting <laughs> to like do 25 cities and like try to tailor the set to each city each region right and, oh, and, that's and the still yeah. make impact and kill it yeah i out. was about to say how did how much homework is that dj homework like so, I mean, y'all know it's a lot. Like, it's like, yeah. okay, we're going, we going, to, we doing three cities in Cali, LA, San Francisco, Sacramento. Okay, mm -hmm. the last two, Sac and San Fran, it's the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of know, you know musically, gonna, yeah, right, you know, you're going to hit your E40, you're going to hit your Keek the Sneak, right. you're going to hit Mr. Fab, you know, you're going to hit Too Short, of course, right. and then give the, the, the local people of that city what's familiar to them, but then say, well, but I came from Miami, so let me give you some of this. Oh, right. nice. Or, you, you know, yeah. or, in Brooklyn, when we did King Steve there in Brooklyn, like mm -hmm. I did a reggae. There's the only, the only city I did a uh, a reggae set, a dance hall set. You was, have to was exactly. Yeah, after you like, how could you not? Right, like, exactly. Oh exactly. My God, so, <laughs> no booze. No I, I, I have a couple of questions for you. I want to start off with um saying when you got that call to do the R&B, money, money, yeah. Like what was that call like? And then being that I follow you, there's a clip that's going around where Tank. Is like giving you your flowers and you two had a moment. That was and the I, last night, yeah. 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 What was that about? If it's not too personal. No, it's not. I mean, because y'all both got emotional and I'm a crier. So it made me cry. I was like, what are they crying about? It's so beautiful. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I just wanted to know because like men don't really let a lot of people see them be vulnerable and you let your vulnerable side out in front yeah. of all those people and then yeah. in front of all of us in the world. Yeah. So what was that call like when you got the call? So Tank, uh, you know, he's, he's such a brother to, to me, to my headliner family. He's hosted, uh, we have a big R&B party called the doo -Wop, Yep. right? Yep. And Tank's hosted it a few times, like in Miami and on the road. Uh, so about a year and a half ago, after one of the nights times he hosted, I said, yo, if you ever need a tour DJ, let me know. And a year later, we're doing Super Bowl in Vegas. And he's like, uh, yo, how much? I'm like, well, how much what? <laughs> how, how much you want? <laughs> what are you talking about? Right. How much you want to go on the road? Oh, I, I, I don't know. He's like, that's the party I missed. <laughs> <laughs> that's the party I missed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was supposed to, I was supposed to be at that party. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was yeah. like, well, just, just stay by your phone. My people from Live Nation going to call you. And they called two days later and we did wow. it from there. And I oh, that's like, dope. It was amazing. Like, I'm forever in his gratitude for that. So what you saw, that clip, was the last show in Vegas mm -hmm. because I have, a, I have two daughters, 15-year-old and a two-year-old. And my two-year-old daughter, she was born with a, a, a medical condition. Mm -hmm. So she's in and out of the hospital a lot. So at the time when the tour schedule came, she had just gone into the hospital. Mm -hmm. And it was like she came out of the hospital three days before the tour started. Mm. And I was like, well, that's God, because that if she was still in there, I would have never left and yeah. went on the road. So, and Tank was following the, the medical story a lot. He's been, you know, staying in tune with it. So that's why he was like, Black Guy came on the road with us at a very difficult time because yeah. it was a lot to like see your baby yeah. in the ICU yeah. and he got to go on the road. And then he didn't even know like that, that show, that last week, the last four shows, she went back into the hospital. But mm -hmm. I didn't tell anybody because I was like, let me just get through these last four shows and then get back home. And so she OK man, now. She, she's all right. She's That's a good. she's a she's a tangible, physical miracle. Like she's an yeah. example of, of our prayer and, family. and God work. You know, she's, a, she's, yeah. a, she's a trooper for real. Yeah. Shout, yeah. Shout, yeah. shout to Scarlett. Yeah. yeah my Scarlett. Baby. Scarlett. So I was I was happy to see that. So. Yeah. Now you mentioned the doo wop. How did that come about? Like, who bought that? Like, how did you just name a party to doo wop? I see you're a co creator. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, how so, did that collaboration? Yeah, my man Mike Gardner from Headliner. Um, in 2016, because this is the third Chris Brown tour that uh, he's done. Oh, okay. All right. But in 2016, I think was the first one. And I was like, yo, it kind of be dope if we did like R and B parties before the party or after parties or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, but it didn't materialize. And then COVID came. And I was doing uh, what I call the fly it storm, like late night slow jam sets, mm -hmm. uh, like the quiet storm, but the fly yeah. it storm. And I remember I would kept telling uh, the viewers every night, like, yo, wouldn't it be dope if we did this outside when we get back outside? Mm -hmm. And that kind of turned into, okay, we back outside now, do op thinking about Lauren Hill, do out that thing, mm -hmm. but like that R&B thing mm -hmm. to kind of signify what it is. And then I went to Mike and I'm like, yo, now is the time that we should really capitalize on. Absolutely. You know, and that was before like the R&B party 
craze yeah. mm-hmm. we feel really happened. So mm-hmm. we're not obviously we didn't invent the theme, right? Of course. But you know, what I think we've been blessed to do is stick to the code and the pedigree of what an army party is supposed to be. Mm. Because a lot of them at some point will deviate from the program and start playing other genres. And we don't do that at yeah, all. Stay, yeah, stick to the script. We won't even play the rap verse on an R&B record. You exactly. stick to the script. Wow. Always. Exactly. So you, you got rules with, like I have rules with South of the City. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same, only same only style music, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I yep. need yeah. your playlist. No. Nah. No, I would definitely come to play. I mean, I mean, I have a flyer store at home. No, you just got to tune in. No, but I love that you said that. I, I love that. And I know Commission's a boy with that, you know, what you just followed up and said, you know, this RB wave was so crazy is that the top notch DJs knew that's what we needed to do. Yeah. I don't know if it was just, uh, Part of the reset button after COVID, mm-hmm. so we was like, you know what? We went hard right before COVID. Let's let's come back a minute. So when they come out, they're safe. They feel safe. It's right. a mentality, and, and then we depend on women. That's, Real DJs depend on women, yeah, and right. I, and that's a stated fact. They we depend on women. We do a brunch. Women are coming four deep. A guy's gonna creep in or beg us. Yo, it's gonna be girls. It just come. <laughs> <It's> come <too. laughs> so we, the brunch is more for the women. So you can't walk into amigos, right? Mm-hmm. So the R&B thing that you're saying, man, y'all, y'all might have been the ones that triggered the whole wave. I'm not saying that you started or not started, but it really became a big thing, which it should have been. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Even if they had to, uh, you know, all that type of music in whatever state they're in, they should have still had like a 30 and over brunch somewhere. Mm-hmm. I even start, wanted to start at a tour like that, but I couldn't get it going because I couldn't get the pieces for the reason you just said, my mm-hmm. brother. We could start off from mm-hmm. 8 to 12. Mm-hmm. R&B from 8 to 9.30. Next person get on, and the first record he throw on is a Meek Mills record. Mm. Because somebody came to him and said, oh, you're going to do this all night? Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. If you they don't not, want, It's tough for them yes. to say it, you know? If you don't want R&B and soul music, this is not the party for you. And that's, yep. that's cool. Like, yeah. there's yeah, an audience for that. everything and everybody. But when you come to a duo, you're going to get everything from Chris Brown to Michelle A. Mm. to like all points in between because yeah. then the other thing is like it's not only like 90s r&b which a lot of people get stuck right in oh, yeah. that decade yeah it's like no we're gonna no. take you back to the 70s yes perfect example i think the second second duo i've ever my first record when i started was jackson five rock and robin like i started with that mm. and you it's interesting to see like some people would be like huh but yeah. then you can't deny the energy of it and right. then you just see the wave build and build and we started it in a very small uh bar lounge in winwood called racket mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and then it grew and we started doing it at this outside venue called the urban which yep. was like two thousand people yeah and we would pack it out with two thousand people yeah and then we started doing it on the road nba all-star weekend in cleveland we've done mm-hmm. it in vegas three times we've done it in texas three times we've done it in la mm-hmm. soul train awards so the artists that we get to host it chris brown tank of course coco jones yeah maya keisha cole like the list mario the list goes on and on mm-hmm. but what even though it becomes a high profile celebrity attended event the core of it is still the music the core of it is still dance you're still gonna dance at the do regardless yeah. of your age demographic whatever it is like if you 25 or you 55 because mm-hmm. they all in there yeah they all range in there yeah because who doesn't like the vibration of r&b music I, I, I'm an R&B head, but I have a question for all three of you now. Oh God! No, this is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because your questions be out of control. I'm not. <laughs> either, this, it could be, but this is not it. With the BET special tribute to Usher, mm-hmm. with all the females, you guys being DJs, do you think it should have been an all female tribute, or I think it should have been men because we have a lot of male R&B singers that can sing. Mm-hmm. Who would you have picked to I'll- perform? Um, for that for that tribute i would have picked chris of course i would have picked october london mm. and Absolutely. i would have picked uh mm. i would have picked raheem usher yeah mm-hmm. raheem would be, yeah. but for what songs yeah. like what song would you give chris brown to do for the tribute yeah okay yeah. and um for raheem devon what song are you giving him to do i'd have give raheem i'd have probably had him do a uh, seduction mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then october london could have done a. Uh, Nice and slow, mm. yeah, because yeah. he's that's he's incredible. Yeah. Who could do superstar? I ain't gonna front. Can I go a little old school? Yeah, 
because he's not old school, but they have a sexiness. Pause. They got a sexiness that come on stage, and I think that it would have worked because at a war show when they're, you know, congratulating the person there, we also got to put somebody that he looked up to too. Out of winning, got an Eric Benet or a Kim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Come on, he would have appreciated that, like that. You know, for yeah. somebody that you know, mm-hmm. so an OG to come out, the OG to come out, and, and he like, said yeah. yes to do some Kim or Eric Benet to do superstar. Yeah. What about you, Kamish? Who would you pick to do the Usher tribute? You know, I didn't see it, so um, it was all females. So just pick all men that you think should do. Like I'm they trying did, to think who yeah. would do. Uh, who would do bad girl? I was just about to say who would do bad girl. Like wow, I don't. I'm, I'm trying to think who would do that. They would come out last too. But that um, was crazy. Yeah. Who is? Yeah, you stumped me on that one. Who is Neo? No. I, 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 I Neo Maybe. for bad Neo girl. He could. He Neo. could. But you know who I was thinking could do bad girl because they're so good with dancing and like the. I would think Amarion could do bad mm, girl. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think Amarion could do bad girl. Mario could do superstar because he's hot. He's falsetto pitcher. Singer yeah, after he showed off the dream. The dream. The dream, oh, yeah. the dream can sing. Yeah, the dream can sing his butt off. Still though, he can't dance. Uh, no, no, he's I'm not about a dance, singing. Though. I'm just saying if he could have did, he could have did superstar because he's falsetto. Right, but he you don't need you that. don't really need him to rock and to go crazy on superstar. Bad girl, he would have had to dance because that's coming. Yeah. No, I don't want him doing bad girl. I would want Amarion <laughs> doing bad girl yeah. for sure. Yeah, but that's yeah. a dope list though. Yeah, that's that I would I would I would like that. I would like that. And Tank brought Amarion out in the LA show and uh, they went they went crazy. Stupid. Amarion is Amarion is dope. crazy. Yeah. Stupid. All right, yeah. here's my oh god, all right. Not hypothetical question. Hypothetical. But you got not, it's not no, hypothetical, it's not. but you gotta you have to pick one. Don't judge me. <laughs> Chris Brown, Tank, because that's your man's. Usher, R. Kelly. In terms Whose of catalog are you going to use? And you can only use their catalog to do a doo party. Who are you rocking out with for oh. a whole doo party? Name the four again. Usher, Chris Brown, Tank, R. Kelly. R. R. Kelly, the artist. R. Kelly. Easy. R. Kelly really? has the most out of yeah, all of them. Yeah. The and Chris Brown, is, Chris like, Brown's a close second at this point because second. he's got he's got so many in his twenty yeah. years. Yeah. But R. Kelly has but R. Kelly, yeah, it's 30, 30 years. plus years. Yeah, like, I just want to know who who would who were like really. And I play R. Kelly in the doo wop already. I'm loving like that. I'm not like yeah, I never like, I never strayed from that. Never. I Listen, that's where we differ. So like I haven't yeah, played yeah. R. Kelly in like <laughs> seven or eight years, and I'm telling, I said I'm like Kamish, <laughs> they don't. Care they don't when they where, you are. <laughs> no. where you are. I mean, I don't know. They don't care. No, I've done it all around the country. No, fam, they really? Don't care. They don't care. I was in Minnesota. The woman's telling you right here. They, they don't, don't care. care. Yeah. I was mad that I didn't get R. Kelly at my birthday party. Mm-hmm. I got no R. Kelly. You didn't. You didn't spend. Somebody <laughs> is gonna. Some. Somebody. But I didn't get R. Kelly gonna... at my birthday party, and I love R. Kelly. Fam, I threw on three in a row. <laughs> back you to can't, back. Then, I, then I have a different fan base than all of you in here. No, my fan base is try, not allowing it. Try it and see what happens. You, you said try it and see. Wait, my thing is, why did you check stop? And see. Hmm? Yeah. They came to you and said you shouldn't do that? Yo, I seen, I'm not going to tell this person's name, but I went to an AKA party, right? Mm-hmm. I went to an AKA party at Taj. You know, Taj for like 500 people. The joint was packed. You put R. Kelly on. I didn't put on anything. I just walked in there. <laughs> I walked in there. And this is how big of an AKA joint was. The DJs were AKAs. Mm. That's dope. It was dope. Yeah. Right? This chick put on, no, I'm not telling you no names, but this <laughs> chick put on Aaliyah's back and forth. Mm-hmm. And they booed her so crazy. You know, they turned around that, and booed her so crazy. That, she had to take no. the record off, it, and that's not even R. Kelly. That's just him singing on the on the yeah, but in the beginning. It's two. It's two things that can be where I mean, fly. You was about to say something. So no, nah, I would just say. I mean, me in that in that scenario, I might have leaned all the way into it. Like, oh, y'all gonna front on this? Well, here, take this. Uh, feeling on your booty. Okay, take this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Take that. Like, let's try to really deny. Like, you know. Yeah. And because in the beginning, I used to, I used to be like. On the mic, I would say when I would play a song, you gotta separate the man from the music. I used to say that because I was fearful of the reaction. I thought you and still it, say that. No, stop, <laughs> I stopped saying it. You stopped because saying I noticed that they don't care. They don't care. Once they mm. in in the moment, 
Like mm-hmm. listening to it in, and this comes with all kind of music. Like listening to music in the middle of a party while you got a drink in your hand, you dancing with somebody, you feeling good, whatever. It's different than like if you're working out or you're driving in a car and what you choose to listen to on your personal individual time. Mm-hmm. But how many records in hip hop do we get lost to that talk about murder and killing and shooting and what you know whatever it is? Mm-hmm. But in the moment in the party. It's anything it's the goes. jam. It's the like, jam. It's like it's you like know, it's, it's like it, it, so, so if we're gonna York, if, if we're gonna apply that rationale to R. Kelly, then you gotta apply it across, across the board, yeah. The entire board. My yeah. man, we we've been getting it for years. We just oversee it, like you said, it's the feeling and we gotta play because I used to get it when I played OPP. I heard I had chicks walking to me, yo, he talking about cheating and got bugging and he's some new oh, artist and uh, so go, so, go, so go, I would clearly I would clearly go. <laughs> play it again yeah. it was you know it's a big yeah. record and i think that the like you said it's more of the feeling it's the mood it's Man. the mode i mean we, have, like, we get this question right record. now about diddy like 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 some people don't know where they stand on that like correct like i'm on like, when i'm on twitch and i'm playing i'm like do can i play certain records the and people be like no you can't well, the beauty of it is is that is that puff really isn't an artist right so it's like well so what you're not gonna play any bad boy records like we're no. not doing that. Like, yeah, that, that like you know, the, the, te- so, the text went out to just not play his verses to where they're going. So and at the end of the day, the records that are big, we don't really need to play his his no, I, I, I I one day not concentrate, not doing the the uh the, 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 the <laughs> but when the track is so crazy, uh, yeah. and they were going crazy, but when the D the uh the D came on, it was like this. Yeah, yeah, they trying to fight. Like, I don't, I'm trying to fight it. No, but it's the love. Yeah. And, you know, we got enough years in where we get that much love. So yeah. we'll get a conversation or a question before they boo or whatever because of the status we are. And then y'all got to believe that. And you need to do that, R. Kelly. I'm telling you. You need to play. I'm doing three joints back to back. Play R. Kelly. Just try no. to see what happens. Play, play, just check and see. <laughs> I mean, it's not like they're going to hire another DJ on the spot. Right. <laughs> and, and, and my thing is, I throw it on and I go, yup. And, <laughs> and I'm known. I am known. But cussing the crowd out. Are you the first at the crowd? What? Yeah. I know, I'm known for that. He's seen it. Yeah. What? Yeah. I, would, I would tell you, like, 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 like going back to to his doo-wop party, right? Yeah. And he has specific rules. <laughs> I was doing that ten years ago at South in the City, where I was like, listen, and I would get on the mic, and he used to see me. I would get on the mic and be like, this is South in the City. Mm-hmm. We playing all Southern hip hop and R&B from start to finish. Right. If you ask me for some Rihanna, she's from Barbados. <laughs> That's not the time. <laughs> if you ask me for Drake, he's from Canada. Yeah. That's not, not the South. That's right. not the South. <laughs> like, right. I used to do that all the time. Don't ask me for anybody from New York. Right. Because right. you still you know in the city. I know we live here. Right. But you hear this all the time. Right. Right. You are here for South in the city. Yep. If right. you about that life, Stay right here. Oh, okay. If you're not about that life, the door is over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just, I just did the theme that you have mentioned. I just let my hands fall because mm-hmm. I always stay in party mode. It's, yeah. it's tough. You know, you want to satisfy everybody, but it's always the, the minute one or two mm-hmm. people, and they sit there like this. And mm. and I used to be the <laughs> DJ that would focus on that that person, yeah, yeah, and it would throw me off. Yeah. Really? Like, yeah. I got little, what that. am I doing wrong that? These two people are not having a good time. Right. Yeah. And then you know, years in the business, you learn. You first of all, you can't please everybody. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, don't, it's it's not. It's like shouldn't even try. Mm-hmm. When did you learn that? Probably 2018. Yeah. So, everybody had to learn. So that. a full yeah. ten years later. Yeah. Yeah. You had to learn yeah. because you. I, yeah. I know what he's saying. You try. You're looking at him and go, okay. I got the hair butt. It's always a hair butt. Somebody gets up and they doing some stupid dance to some song that you mm-hmm. doing. You ain't expect them to get up. That's the hair butt. Okay, I'm gonna build it right there. I'm gonna build it right there. Somebody go cut it. A girl or a guy got him. Then these two over here. Mm-hmm. You see it, and it's like a spotlight's on them. Mm-hmm. So you're like, okay, well, let me get that. I'm gonna get that. Mm-hmm. You're concentrating to that corner. But three quarters of that room. Just concentrate on me. I'm going to dance in the middle <laughs> it, it, of the, it's, it's tough, the like middle said, of the floor tough. the whole time. I'm with you, DJ. I got you. Well, you know <laughs> how it is. You, yeah, you remember yeah, how yeah. Roseland was? We used yeah. to Roseland with 2,500 people. Mm-hmm. And the DJ says in the middle stage, and out of 2,500 doing this, it's two. one person. <laughs> and she right here with her back on the stage. And she don't Mad. look. Look, she like this. Mm-hmm. I mean. And turn around looking up at me. And I'm like. Mom was good. Angry. Yeah. I mean, angry girl. He he plays in in, in, in an outdoor joint in Miami that's two thousand. Like you, mm-hmm. you 
the booth is the booth isn't necessarily in the middle of the joint because there's like a whole other side to it. Yeah. yeah. What spot is that? Called the urban. The, the urban. urban. It's a beautiful urban. space yeah. too. Um, is that where you took us? That place? Yes. You yes. went there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love that place. I'm, yeah. Are you going to be? Are you not going to be there? Yeah. He's doing bigger things now. He's doing bigger. Well, things. Now gonna... I'll be there, but just not I'll be next month. Next, next month. Yeah. August. Uh, yeah. yeah. So like if he if he could see the room. Yeah. You know, sometime now, and this is a this is what we're talking about the social media era now, right? Yeah. So we're in a space where <clears throat> as DJs, about forty percent of the room ain't moving. Um, yeah. 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 Because everybody's 40 on their phone. Of the room is yeah. on but their everybody's phone. on their phone. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on their phone. How do you again, feel about people that, being on their phones while you're on the set? Like but what that is? don't really happen when I'm on the set. Because they too busy singing mm -hmm. or dancing. Mm -hmm. That's great. It don't really happen, especially at the doo -wop. That's I, why the doo is so special. Go to a I'm telling you, that's why I gotta so come to a doo When's the next doo -wop? Uh, don't know yet. Oh, okay. so because you know, Mike, my uh, my doc guy, he got the rest of the Chris Brown tours to do. Then we gotta okay. figure out where in Miami we're gonna do it. But hopefully, sooner than later. Are you finished with the Chris Brown tour for right now? Uh, I am. Oh, okay. Yeah, I am. How was that experience? Well, just doing it. It was like I think we did. Because the Tank Tour and the Chris Tour aligned mm. in Chicago on the same night. So that mm. was the first party we did. That was a doo-wop. Okay. And both of them hosted it. And that was amazing. Then last week, we did D.C. and Atlanta. Mm. And both of those. Atlanta's a lot. <laughs> Atlanta's. Atlanta's always Atlanta a lot. against it. In. Yeah, Atlanta's always <laughs> a lot. We did like 4,000 people in Atlanta. Like, yeah. that was, really? I'll see Atlanta next month. And money long. Oh, yeah? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. he does. Um, and then we just did Orlando uh on the 12th yeah two days ago mm -hmm. whatever it was um and then they're they're in houston tomorrow oh nice uh, but I, I'll, I'll still be here so yeah I'm oh, if okay. you could pick one mm -hmm. your lane with the clubs and how you set things up and like you said you got your business you got your old crew you got your new crew you're doing all these great ideas which is really great i applaud you for that for setting up your own lane if you can do that or just tours which one would you do Ooh. parties or just tours parties or just tours because you didn't signify how great you're on tour. So artists always, because you could be doing a show and another artist that come on after him or before him be like, hey, can you do my set? That's tough because, um, again, like I said, like the 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 energy in in a party is different because I love to see people dance. Even though like they danced on the tour, like they there's only so much dancing you can do like in an auditorium, like in your seat or in the right. aisle. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's something about seeing like 500, 1,000 people moving, moving and moving. Like it's it's just... Yes. It's not that one is better or worse than the other one, but I think I would prefer to continue in, in parties and not only big yeah. room, like small, intimate, yeah. intimate yeah. rooms too. Yeah. yeah. But that's just for me, I guess it was a real blessing for me because unlike a lot of DJs that got to come up practicing in their rooms, because mm. I started so late in the game, mm. all my practice was live, was in front of people. Cause I didn't, oh, okay. I didn't have the money to have equipment. You was getting right. so taken people. Pract, that's why I was so bad in it. <laughs> yeah. I practiced in real time. But that's a hell of an experience. Yeah. I mean, dope, dope. Dope. I still I learned. Look where, you know, you I was, I was the same way when I first came up. By the time I got to, I was at St. John's for a year and a half. I was on a radio station there. We didn't have a mixer. We didn't have a mixer. I didn't listen to the show. Um. So listening. the first time I got. <clears throat> I had my first weekly was 2000 at Envy. Mm -hmm. I still didn't have turntables in my house. Mm -hmm. I didn't get turntables until two years later. Envy was practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's crazy. Envy and Cheetah was practice. Damn, Cheetah that was the only was time I got a chance to touch anything for the week. Superstar yeah. over here. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. So how does it how does it make you feel when you hear all these hip hop artists? Like I heard Joe Button talk about you on his show. Mm -hmm. And then Tank talk about you even still. And Chris Brown mentioned you, I think, on the R&B Money um, oh, interview. I, I think he did. I, but I seen a clip where he did. And you see him dancing and singing at your parties. How does that make you feel to watch you come from starting late in the game? And mm -hmm. then it's like you caught up to everybody that's like really killing it. I think I just uh, attribute it to dedication to the craft, number one. Mm -hmm. Because... A lot of what I went through was a lot of hate in the beginning, but people telling me you never carry crates of records, so you're not a real DJ. You got I, that talk for years. That's a hell of for a years, fucking convers commission. That's years. a hell of a conversation to get. You never did this, so you're not this. You didn't do this, so you're not that. And I'm like, well, you started with Serato. I started on vinyl, and and they would say basically that took away from my validity as a DJ. And I'm like, well, 
okay, if I started in the Serato era, then what I'm going to do, I made sure that I played on turntables, mm. the Serato vinyl and needles, and learn that way so that I could stay as close to the foundation of the art form as mm-hmm. possible mm-hmm. because of what I'm worried about what this person is saying about, mm-hmm. you know, about <coughs> me not being a real DJ or whatever. So I went through that for like four or five years. And then because before I DJed, I rap. So I used to kind of have a similar thinking to like somebody like a soldier boy mm-hmm. where he, where he was, you can't help when you were born. You can't help when you fell in love with something. You can't help when you started. So soldier boy never had to buy dad tapes or know about that machine <laughs> right, or right. ADATs or reels, like, you know, right, right. recording in the nineties and taking two inch reels to the studio, mm-hmm. but you can't fault him for that. Right. So you can't fault me for starting on Serato because I obviously got good enough to where people respond to it. Mm-hmm. And now I look at what about somebody who is 15 years old right now mm-hmm. that wants to be a DJ right. and all they know is controllers. Mm-hmm. Right. That's because you can't help how technology is moving. So we look at this person and say, you don't deserve the chance to be in this craft and this business and this industry right. because of when you were born or when you chose to start something. So the whole, like a lot of my experiences were very negative in the beginning. And I took that and used that as, as that fuel, fuel. Mm-hmm. To, to get good. And that's the type of thing. That this That's another thing with this show. Them just hearing that because there's a lot of young DJs. I got, you know, I've been patching them to the show and stuff. They hear it. They heard a lot of stuff about all the guests and stuff. That's the type of thing. You take those as challenges. Yep. Because no matter what you do in life, you're going to run across some kind of challenge. You're going to run around good days, bad days. You just work hard to make sure you got more good days than bad. Right. Because yep. even that, when you master your craft, you're going to have some detailed type of object to test you. I've gotten to a party and forgot my needles. Mm-hmm. You know that. what I mean? I had to run to the nearest store. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah, see, and that's the new wave. You forgot to charge it. Yeah. yeah. You know me. Uh, I forgot my needles. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? I forgot my mats to the turntable. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got I had the rubber joints on there. <laughs> <laughs> so it was all forgetting headphones and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When it was a necessity. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So do you use stuff. headphones when you um, mix it? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. You know, we talked about it earlier, but I don't hear that well. Oh, for real. Mm. My hearing, my hearing's been messed up for at least ten years. Is that because of the music and the loudspeakers, or is it? It's about definitely because keeping the booth volume all the way up, mm-hmm. you know. And and in some of the clubs I've done, like in the past, like live story, like the booth monitors are like taller than me, right? Mm-hmm. And they'll they'll be on both sides of you, you know. So for me, in order to like you know feel the music, mm-hmm. they got to be loud. Mm-hmm. That's why you you amaze me that you DJ with uh phone headphones, like the little the earbuds that's wild to me yeah, like man. i don't know how you do it me too i got one wire I, I, that's yeah and they ain't trying to be cute I'm, no I'm talking for me like, I, I just t- i'm i'm you know i came from the you know the wire you know, yeah, 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 yeah. i'll be honest with you when i first started again not having anything mm-hmm. until two years after i'm already in the club mm-hmm. um when i started i never used monitors wow Mm. Yeah, but I, can, I, can. I didn't. At the radio station we had very small monitors, and it, it was it was, it was not great. Right. So I never. It was noisy to me, mm. so I never really used it. I just used the headphones. Mm-hmm. Well, and even I, my headphones are not loud. Like, right. that's crazy. Well, I ask you, just in case anybody is listening and they run across that or think, "Damn, I'm gonna mess up my hearing," you know, mm. in that way. Do you think that uh, there's an option of things they can do? You know, other than having the music loud, or because sometimes that takes practice of just listening. And, uh, yeah. You know, I, we learn bar counts as mm-hmm. DJs. Yeah. We learn bar counts, so our mixing ability, our mm-hmm. hearing levels, is it an option? You think I mean, you definitely take? don't have to have the monitors loud. It just okay. it becomes a comfort thing. Like it becomes mm-hmm. just you know, it's weird because if the monitor isn't loud, you think that the the club, the room isn't loud. So. Correct. I go through that raise the top, and that's why we start the red line. And then yeah. the engineers and sound engineers they look right, at us right, like, like you crazy. You start, they start because this. you start like, like, oh, okay, my, it really is loud out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and you know that's just but that just comes from habit of right keeping the volume up because you feel like mm-hmm. the louder it is, the more it's knocking, the more you feel it, the more the crowd will feel it, and then you get into this cycle of damaging mm-hmm. your hearing. Mm-hmm. The monitors do not have to be loud at all. Mm-hmm. Definitely, you can wear earplugs mm-hmm. and hear the music at the same time, but it's about a comfort level. Like, how loud do you want to hear it? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it's a catch twenty two for me. I like it loud. Mm-hmm. I have to have it loud, otherwise, right. it starts to affect my performance. Okay. So, like, when you got people in the DJ booth with you and they're looking like, "Get like, your butt out the booth, then, but <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. right, don't come right, in." I'm not turning so, it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's also that's also how you know that he's playing in some rooms with some sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got some good sound around him. Yeah. Well, I got a hypothetical, but you said you you had a hypothetical. No, that was my Chris Brown when I want to know who 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 he was gonna pick with the duo party. Oh, that was. But then, but then, cool. but that, but that, not even a, to be um, hypothetical. Uh -huh. You do listen to hip hop, right? Yeah. So, since it's the Kendrick and Drake thing, do you think it's over for Drake? Do you think Kendrick like ended him, or he just gonna take a couple of years and be quiet? I don't even think he's gonna take a couple of years. No. You don't definitely. think gonna be? He'll be out before the end of the summer. Yeah, yeah like you think oh, so? definitely before the end of the year. He should sit down for a few minutes. No, he don't have to. No, I, I mean, no, I don't, don't think so. You go, you go, you go back. So, it's, so, it's like we don't get to miss him. I want to miss you but think, with your okay, music. But think about this. <laughs> Jay dropped an album every single year for fifteen years. Mm -hmm. He didn't take time off. That's why he was number one for so for, for so, so many long. summers. Yeah. So Jay wasn't like Maxwell, where like he would wait seven years and then come back. But every single fourth quarter, you got an album from Jay Z. Yep. And you didn't think about, well, damn, I want to miss Jay. There you was two people that was doing that. It was Jay at one time, and Mariah did eight straight years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So you know I mean, you know. I'm all Drake out. <laughs> but, but think about it. But like nobody, you're not forced to listen to him. No, I'm no, I'm not. You know, I no, I, I pick and choose when I want. I mean, he got good music. I, it's just that Can't deny when that. when the music is on every third song on the radio, it's it gets to be Stop a bit much. To the radio. Yeah, that's why you guys are here up there now. <laughs> Get y'all outside the booth. What do you think about the radio playing just saying thirty or forty songs every? That's how it's always been. Unless it's a unless it's a mix show, but that's. Okay, for example, tell you a short story. When I was trying to still pursue getting a record deal, and I went to a radio station with my song, trying to get my song in a rotation, the program director looked at me and said, so what about your record is going to make me take this Drake record out of rotation? Because my ad buyers are depending on people listening to hear the ads that are financing the station. Sheesh. And if they don't hear this record, they're going to change and go to another station. So mm. what's why would I remove that and put you in? And I didn't have the answer. Politics. Wow, as usual. That's insane. So he, so they really told you that in my yeah, that's in politics. My face. Wow, and I appreciated it mm -hmm. because it was like, oh, now I under, I really understand what this game. Yeah, that's is. why it's a competition for real, all day long. And you have like, to knock somebody right. out. Right, you know, like, go I'm back like, to the studio, make something, or, or just not play that game. I'm right. like, okay. What was your rap name? Fly guy. It was fly guy. Uh -huh. I, so yeah. I was just about to mention that, like, um, it's a good point that you mentioned that because um, you do have. Five albums out, right? Four, got seven, seven, seven all, rap all albums. Yeah, yeah. I only yeah. DJ to support my rap habit. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, can you spit something for me, real quick? I knew it was gonna get to. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know you was a rapper. So we're gonna have oh. our first um DJ do a rap. Come on, my God. No, he's got. Like, he got. Yeah, he definitely he dropped not? like you dropped like two or three projects during COVID. Two uh, projects. Two. So yeah. one one on my because I like to drop on my birthday in May. So mm -hmm. like like 2020, I did four because I turned 40. So I dropped 40 mm -hmm. on my birthday and then 2021. But every year. Yeah. Oh nice. Oh yeah. So I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, she might be on the table like, 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 like <laughs> Yes. White on white linen, Lord knows that I've been sinning. Surrounded by women you adore, they know the difference. This is rap caviar, tab heavy at the bar. Shots of rep, not see it. Come on, come on. <laughs> nah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> that's that's that, that, all my. That, that, but you know, but that's something that um I would say my first passion is making hip hop music. What yeah. I like to say, adult contemporary okay. rap music, like something that people can listen to over forty and not feel. In the offense. category of whom? Who I've heard, um, yeah, like who inspired like you to Big do Daddy rap? Kane, okay, mix of Scarface. Okay, so those those two right there, like so the so the albums and the rap was before the Serato game or Dory. I've been making music since I was fifteen. Oh, okay. See, so. this is see, but when they you got that question about coming in with the Serato game, I think you should do it, do that out them because you're in the game, you've been yeah. in the game. That's you know why, I mean? like, I I found it funny when people would try to like check my music card and my music knowledge and i'm mm -hmm. like you don't even understand the household i grew up in like right. my older brother was editor in chief of the source magazine in the 90s. Yeah, talking about outside the booth like intro. two two Ding. two bedroom doors down from me was mm. editor in chief of the source so you want to you can't check my hip-hop card my music card any any of that were you ever in the source i was in 1999 no 2000 mm. i was in it in 2000. huge year okay. that was a big thing yeah. i remember that mm -hmm. I was Jesus. In 2000. And then nice. he left. He left. He went to BET after that. And then from there. But yeah, the he was there from 94, from 94 to 2000. 
So if you can tell anybody that's up and coming rapper or DJ, what advice would you give them? Or what advice would you give your younger self? My younger self, I would tell, do your best not to let the opinions of other people affect your trajectory. Because being an emotional guy that I am, sensitive guy that I am, as the videos on Instagram have shown, you know, a little, little emotional. But <laughs> I think um, I think that, and it's difficult to do, but you got to try your best to not let the outside opinions mm -hmm. influence how you feel about yourself. Right. And know that if you're truly passionate and committed to something, it doesn't matter what people think. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the thing with anybody that knows me knows I do all this art because it's art from a place of passion money and any and any, all the accolades or whatever that's all cool but the foundation of it is i truly love what i do and i think people can see that when they come to my parties or they they kind of see it for they themselves get that energy. Like we're down there i'm about they, to catch a fight they, i got i gotta come Greg, we should go for august no we yeah we're gonna talk to him and get the I date mean, august everything. august is a busy month for both of us yeah. right like yeah. <laughs> we're not I'm, even gonna i'm going be, to meet you guys right. at martha's vineyard yeah we'll be up there he already we'll told me there. I could come. You told me I could come, so <laughs> yeah. I got my invite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you coming to Martha's Venue? I need the date because you know I'm with 14th. The 14th, August, August 14th. 14th. I land the 13th with Case and them, so yeah, I'm running around. But I, if I got to bring Case with oh, we got something to do. <laughs> <laughs> so for everybody August listening. 31st at Dumbo House. Okay. Oh, okay. So I'm coming to vote. I'm not supposed to they... promote that publicly, but. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I won't say it again. It's too late now. It's only <laughs> 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 Sorry, y'all. So, so, you know, you you are an artist, mm -hmm. right? And you identify yourself as an artist. You tell people that all the time, mm -hmm. which the photography comes from. I was just about to say that mm -hmm. during COVID, you picked up a a, a, a camera. Mm -hmm. Talk about that for a little bit. Um, photography was something I fell in love with in high school, uh, inspired by Gordon Parks, and never had a chance to really pursue it professionally. COVID comes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're not working. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm watching TV, watching like the George Floyd protests and like the people dying from COVID and all of that, and I'm looking at all the coverage here in New York and D.C. and L.A. and Minneapolis. And I'm like, but Miami's going through the same struggles. I'm out in the protests televised. every day. Mm -hmm. And something was like, yo, grab your camera, go out and start capturing what's happening in Miami. Not thinking that it was going to become eventually a book that I self-published, that it would become a photo exhibition, that it would nice. lead to other other opportunities. But it became like this movement called To Miami With Love because it was like a 256-page coffee table book of imagery, black and white imagery of Miami's COVID experience. What's the name of the book? To Miami With Love. To Same Miami name. With Love. Mm -hmm. And that's on it. Amazon or Not everywhere? Anymore. It sold out three times, so I stopped making it. I was what? Like, if if you had book. it, you had it. If you got it, you got it. And if you don't, then you missed it. So Jeez. I can't get one. Wow. Congratulations. That's on that. awesome. Congratulations. That, That's really that led to another uh photo exhibit. And then where now the city of Miami has deemed my work part of Miami's official history. So nice. everything from the 1600s with the Seminole Indians to the photos I took in 2020. And that's in a museum, museum in Miami? Yep. What museum is it? History in? Miami. That's history in Miami. Museum. So I have to go there to see the book. Gotta go but Please, you can't touch it. No. You yeah, know, that's awesome. Like they'll that's show crazy. it to you. They might, they might white glove you. They might give you white gloves and let you look through it, but or they will flip the pages for you. How many mm -hmm. copies do you have at home for one. your mom? My mother has one. I have one. My brother has two. That's awesome. That's that's, that's really please y'all please that's support support. Y'all listening, man? Don't just take this conversation just mm -hmm. as a conversation. Please listen to the details of that conversation. This man said he published a book. He was talking fast and going over it, <laughs> but he's saying that he published a book. That's a all. And all, all I hear history. is him, and it's all history. I hear is a black guy dealing with challenges. Yep. And you know, this is the outside the booth. We talk about everything, and if this ain't enough outside the booth information for you, man, you you're open to do a lot of things, man. Publishing well, this, books, photography. That's crazy. This brother here. So that book publishing and everything that led me to my current photography project which now you and i have to have a conversation because this okay. one now is all about djs okay mm. it's called bpm beats picks and masters yep. Oh, yep. so i had a photo exhibition at dumbo house and he sat on the panel mm -hmm. and what this is about is bringing the awareness to the psychological financial and mental strain that we go through as djs that the public the party goers have no idea about okay the stresses of our industry mm. the no sleep no eating no health insurance, no 401k, 
you know, maybe drug addiction, whatever vices are, anything that we are affected by mm -hmm. in order for us, alcoholism, maybe whatever it takes for us to do our job that they don't know that we go through. Mm -hmm. That's what this project is about. So this is all about like portrait shots of DJs. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So it's not about like DJs DJing, but it's about look at the camera, just show me the eyes. Right. And so it's like the faces of the goal is to get 300 DJs across the country. I'm That's up to like 160 something on it. But well, I'm, I'm 167. I'm definitely in it. Yeah. Oh, you were 67. You know I'm close. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely awesome. in it. But I, I will tell you this: the, I never posted about that, right? Um, and I, I still have this stuff, and I'm always look at it every every few weeks. I look at it. I'm like, I should post this. I should post this. But um, that discussion panel mm -hmm. was like to me was a therapy session. It really was. It really was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I, that should have been televised. Yeah. <laughs> my so opinion. won't you I mean, guys put yeah. it on Amazon Prime under your account? Well, there's no full footage of it. There's, oh. no, there's no full. But, I mean, you can, always, can always do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah because I, now, since they see what it's about, and if it was therapeutic for you, and it was, you, it, it was definitely because, therapeutic. Yeah. If so I, you, can, you guys if could do it. I had access to that when I started DJing. I saw something like that because it was DJs, you know, right before me. I, mm. I came right behind the bets. Mm. Like I started eighty six, eighty seven. Mm. If I saw a panel like that or some kind of thing with information about everything you named in that i definitely would be, would have been in a greater position you know it took us years to get into that better position because we want to coming up with responsibilities because mm -hmm. we still live in life mm -hmm. and that's what made us change but yeah. um definitely that that yeah, can help on the lookout for mass of people i can't wait to see what this new book or yeah. Um, is it going to be a book? It's going to be an exhibition, and, and I'm going. I'm going to be able to get a copy of this book mm -hmm. because I'm interested. Like I was telling you when we met mm -hmm. downstairs, I love my DJs, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like Knuckles was telling you when I had the idea, it was all because the idea came from us all sitting down at <laughs> Nikki's um, <laughs> memorial. Right, it was Processful. a bunch of DJs, mm -hmm. and they were all sitting there talking, and I'm sitting there and I'm watching. I'm like, this, this is something. This is. And it was they, and it was nothing for us. She just sitting there staring thinking, at us I'm like watching, we weirdos. I'm and we look, them. Yeah. we talking, we like. But we're, we're all we're sharing God our fans. party experiences. Yeah. Me being a party goer yeah. and them being the DJs, and I'm just watching them share all these different stories, and I'm like. Because we came from different generations and different types of places. Like he'll tell me about you know L.A. and the full parties and yeah, the downtown and we parties. Talking I'm about talking about the uptown and all the tours, you know. Yeah. And and then, uh, what's his name that does uh. Since you, since you, which Corner you Social. Corner Prince. Social. Prince. Prince is mentioned yeah. his, yeah. his different uh, genres of people that yeah. he got in his party. And I'm like, you know, my constant like, difference. And she just. I'm just sitting there watching. And, and then, and yeah. then I came to Kamish a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, listen, because I was sitting on it for a whole year. Yeah. I was sitting on this idea for a whole year. I was saying I wanted to do it and everything. And I came to Kamish and I came to Knuckles. Only two I came to. And I said. I want to do outside the books mm. and then I'll focus on this. And yeah. here we are. Yeah. Here you yeah. are. Talking to a fly guy. Yeah, talking to a fly guy, <laughs> a published author, right. um, right. photographer. You're in the museum, you're on tours, and all of this success that you have. I just hope that you continue to have the best success. I thank, thank you. you so much for coming and well, coming through. Hold on. And you got a question? I don't have a question. It's a fam you shout out. Uh oh! Shout out one to time. T Crosby, fam. You was in a one time for the rally. I went to fam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. oh, that's so. Dope. So you didn't DJ at all in fam. You no. twenty eight years old. I started, but wow, that's awesome. I thought you did, which coincidentally is when I started drinking alcohol. I never drank before that either. You know what? Really, <laughs> a lot of DJs right here yeah. start. Oh, I listen, I, I didn't start. I didn't start. I didn't start drinking until I. Started, started DJing. DJing yeah. Yo, my yep. first drink was the Roman coat at 28. <laughs> Yo, seriously. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. Yep. Somebody crazy. was like, here. I was like, what is huh? it? I started, well, I started a little younger than y'all. I was like 20, <laughs> I was like 23 when I started. I started finding records of the crate. I ain't seen it. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yo, yeah. I, fly guy. Uh, Thank you. Me so personally, much. DJ Knuckles. We got I got a team. I love these guys to death. But me personally, I love people with history and I love people with history in detail. Thank you. You know to to see where the creation came and you just blessed and 
I'm honestly looking forward to your future, and hopefully, I can be me and Kamish can be part of it. Well, he's already there. Me, I could be part of that future because we travel and we. Absolutely. I probably was passing you or somewhere you was, and just appreciate the music. Yeah. I just so I'm glad I got to meet you two. today. <laughs> I'm coming to a doo wop or two. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming to that museum. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's book. be clear. Let's be clear. <laughs> I love this guy. Yes, sir. <laughs> so my brother. Doo wop is not the only thing that you have. Nah, but. Uh, you have a joint called Crates. We ain't even talk about yeah, it. We ain't What's talk, crate? We, crate, crate? Crates is the hip hop version of Duo. Really? So he got to come back. <laughs> we need another. We need yeah. a. We need another session with you. I, because... I was trying to do Crates because I knew I couldn't do Duo. Not saying right. that I can't do it. Right, right, right. But Duo is its own stratosphere right now. Right. Own entity. Um. So I figured I can come do Crates. And earn my way into doo up <laughs> at some point. <laughs> you know you gotta I mean? earn that, brother. You know you. <laughs> <laughs> so is crates money. is that a mixture of everything? Crates is all hip hop. All hip hop. Crates is all hip hop. But so it's no R and B. Zero. Jesus. Just Christ. like doo up. man has zero a, He got a blueprint yeah. and a formula. Yeah. You gotta come back. And it's like it's like, really it's crazy. Deep in the crates. Yeah. With hip hop. Yeah. So Where do you the do next that? Crate party. Uh, now we. have only do it in Miami, but we're trying to, you know, because we that's new, it's fresh. So okay. we're trying to build it and like, you know, hopefully expand it like do I. Oh you know? yeah, that's gonna yeah. be good. Oh yeah. yeah. That's gonna yeah. be as good as the panel you do, because mm -hmm. that's gonna collect a lot of new people in the business yeah. because they really want to see a lot of them. They you play it in a party, you're like, oh, you playing this old scar. But if it's set up and these themes work when you stick to them, man. Oh, even in our promo, great. like you'll see like a slick rig video, a ghetto boys video, a ball mm -hmm. MJG, a Jay-Z video, an outcast video, a do or die pole pimp. Like you'll see all of that in a montage just to mm. let you know what you're coming to. Oh, and so yeah, that like fascinates only East me. Coast or only West That's Coast, dope. or you, you it know. fascinates me because it's in Miami. Mm -hmm. So for us in New York, when we think of Miami, we don't think of Slick Rick, right? You know what I mean. Yeah. I've seen Slick Rick in Miami mm -hmm. before, right, right, right. when he came out of prison. I saw him his first performance. <laughs> I saw it in Miami, but yeah. I don't think about, oh, they playing that, or they playing, you know, uh, uh, uh Diggable Planets or something like that, right. or or Tribe Called Quest. I'm not thinking that they playing that in a club in Miami. Yeah, but think about it. When that music was out, and we were of age, and we were watching your own TV raps. That's what, that's what we were listening. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, listen to the radio. That's what we were hearing. So yeah. no matter what city you lived in, at some broad stroke, you still had that as your reference for. Right, but we would have to be there in Miami to see that y'all understood that or was watching that because we go down there and we looking for. I mean, even we of age, we looking for this and that. You know what I mean? Right. You yeah. know. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. finesse and sick quiz. You yeah. know what I mean? To see what y'all playing and stuff like that, not knowing. Y'all do big Mike hard, mm -hmm. but you'll throw that. You know what I'm saying? That Q-tip, that third record on the mm -hmm. album. And, yeah. well, I didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. of the visual format that was laid out. Yeah. And, you know, I think that New York has been so supreme. Sometimes we forget mm -hmm. how powerful y'all came. It wasn't even how powerful y'all are down south in the different trimesters of music to the Midwest. It's how powerful mm. y'all came. Yeah. You know what I mean? Outcast got on the mic and said, look, I got something to say. And then the You're south went, it ever since. boom. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, it ever since. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely. I appreciate y'all, man. Well, I appreciate you for coming through. Man. Everybody, give a good one time for DJ uh, A Fly Guy for coming. Somebody in. tell me, Fly Guy was here. <laughs> Stepped outside the booth. I, yeah, so that's that's a, a montage I do, man. I definitely try to do it to all the DJs. I've done yeah. it at parties and. Somebody go, yo, you gotta do my name. So fly guy, you heard yeah, that, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heard yeah. That, bro. Thank you so <laughs> much. I'm gonna do it at a duo out one day. There oh. you go. There you go. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, we definitely gotta go. You gonna yeah. do you let guest DJs come in and get yeah. on your doobop? Yeah, yeah, we got a bunch get of out of here. Oh, okay. okay. So you definitely we're gonna swap numbers information. Yes. I'm, and I and I, I'm honestly we 25 years in and mm -hmm. I've we've been so busy, I haven't heard him play since justice. Like that's yeah. how bad it is. Yeah. Like, wow. yeah. and he popped yeah. up on me just recently. Yeah, we got an old school bar similar to it. Like you said, small, cozy, intimate, where you could do it, and you can't play nothing new. Mm -hmm. And he, he came in. Up on a Sunday. He popped mm. up, and we was Get in there here. blacking out. So yeah. we playing everything. I love that Sunday cook, party all the way yeah. to like, yeah. you know, that was whatever. Good. You know, that was what I'm good. I had a good time when I went. There. Yeah, and and I feel, and that's that thing. Maybe you know, you're already doing it, and that's a gold mine you have, and I. I'm I'm glad that somebody's doing it the right way, man. Yeah. These I want I want to go to Miami to do that. Yeah. I want that. It's already like, like, <laughs> and you know, already funny, I mentioned that to him. I was like, yo, you know, every city show I went, I'll never forget. I went to Chicago and we used to do Darwin Bishop's parties, and you can't play nothing new, and they in there. 
You know, yeah. and they go outside and then they shoot. They're not doing that move. Yeah. <laughs> you see, that move. it took it took too long. I, 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 they, 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 they weren't doing that move. They weren't doing that move. But look, we're not gonna hold fly guy up nah, anymore. Yeah, yes. We got things to do. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure y'all stay tuned with a fly guy. It's at a fly at guy a fly on guy. Yep. on uh -huh. IG. Yep. I'm your girl BX, Mr. Two One Two Fourth Quarter Boy. What up? And DJ Kamish, I'm out of here. This is outside the booth. Yes. We're right on time today, but yeah, outside the booth. Make sure you follow us on IG. YouTube <laughs> and I, IG yep. at outside the booth, right? Yes, yes. And y'all know this is the only place your favorite DJs come to step outside the booth <laughs> and share their experiences. <laughs> I'm your girl BX, DJ Knuckles, Kamish, and the one and only Fly Guy. Appreciate you. Thank you for coming in. Y'all stay tuned. Somebody told me outside the booth was here. Hey.